MichaelTechTV.com. I'm going to kind of do a show here on um, kind of a show for the younger players and going into the mid 20s on how to be able to play more paintball and also how to get into the sport. Um, you know, I noticed that. You know, I started playing I think when I was about 12, 13 years old. Okay, and that, that time, <laughs> that time of your life, it kind of sucks for paintball because paintball is a very expensive sport. And I was hoping that by doing this video. You know the tech pb community can kind of generate some ideas for some of the younger players on how to play paintball more now i'm going to tell you i'm going to start the age bracket between 12 to 14 years old 12 to 14 years old is probably the hardest age bracket to get into playing paintball consistently and i'm going to tell you right off the bat you need to figure out ways of getting your parents involved and getting your parents support and playing. Some parents are gonna be dead set against it, and in that case, you're probably gonna to have to wait till you're a little bit older. Some parents may be kind of like, okay, it's maybe something kind of fun for them to do, but between 12 and 14 years old, the first thing you need to do is get your parents involved in it. Now, if they can start to view it as more of a serious sport, something that's gonna kind of get you into shape, keep you motivated, keep you responsible, they're gonna get behind it. Um, there's several different ways that you can do this. One, um, you know, having them come over and maybe go to the local paintball field, view the safety demonstration, show that it is going to be a safe sport. Um, second thing you can do is the, probably the biggest period they have for the 12 to 14 or maybe even the 12 to 18 bracket is that you're going to end up taking your paintball gun and shooting your neighbor's car or shooting your neighbors or shooting pedestrians or something like that. We've all seen that freaking video of, uh, you know, what happened in Los Angeles or wherever it was at where the kids were driving around shooting paintball guns. Unfortunately, for about 90% of the people that have never played paintball, that's the image that they have. So their image is not of you playing in the PSP or playing in the MPPL or playing competitively in your local tournament scene. They're afraid that you're gonna spend five or $600 on a paintball gun. And the first thing you're gonna do is put, you know, 20 paintballs on your neighbor's car. And in many cases, that's what they end up doing. But you need to try to overcome that fear with your parents um, in the 12 to 14 year old bracket. And, and try to figure out things that, that will make them more comfortable about it. Maybe when you're not playing, maybe your dad can take the paintball gun and hide it somewhere in your house. Or maybe, uh, um, you know, maybe they can lock it up somewhere to where you don't have access to it so they just don't have to worry about it. You know, they're at work, it's four o'clock, the worst thing that can happen, they're gonna get a phone call, yeah, your 13 year old was arrested, yeah, he decided to go ahead and shoot some neighbor's car and now he's over here in juvenile hall, okay? That sucks, as a parent, that's probably the worst thing that can happen. So 12, 14 years old, the biggest thing is you got to get your uh, parents behind it. Now, let's say, for instance, you get them to tick the, the way of, you know what, mom I want, or mom and dad, I want to get involved in paintball. And they're like, yeah, we'll discuss it later. Probably the first thing I would do if I were you, put on your running shoes and go do two, three laps around the block. They're going to all of a sudden be like, what the hell is he doing? Why is he jogging around the block? Well, mom and dad, paintball is a very competitive sport. And if I'm going to start playing it, I need to get into shape. That's going to kind of freak them out a little bit, especially if you've never played a competitive sport before, is if you actually put your running shoes on and go jog around the block. They're gonna, that's going to kind of show a little bit of initiative that not only are you getting your body into shape to start playing, but that's going to kind of complement them having to open up their wallet into playing. So let's say, for instance, your dad and your mom say, okay, 12, 14 years old, we're going to go ahead and support you on the sport, but you're going to have to pay for it on your own. Okay, now you're kind of stuck because you're going to have to try to find some domestic chores. And this is what I'm hoping that as a community we can bond together and try to think of some ideas. Okay, unfortunately, 12, 14 year old, you don't have a car, so you're kind of limited within walking distance. Some of the things you can do, yard work. Do some chores around the house. See if your parents will uh, up your allowance money. Dog walking, you know, I mean, everybody's got a crazy rabbit dog, and you know, asking maybe some of your neighbors that, you know, maybe if I walk your dog for an hour, you know, get your dog in shape, um, you know, would you pay me ten bucks, ten, fifteen dollars? Pretty good money to do that. I know when I drop my dog off at a, um, you know, I drop my dog off at a little puppy resort or a dog resort, you know, a boarding kennel where you know we go out of town. I got to pay an extra fifteen dollars a day for them to actually play with my stupid dog. So that's something that you may be able to do in the twelve to fourteen year old bracket. Um, to kind of raise some more money for paintball. And I hope everyone will kind of come together and give some ideas for the 12 to 14 year olds also. Um, second thing too, 15 to 18 years old. Probably some of the best jobs that you can have between 15 to 18 years old is working in a restaurant. The beautiful thing about working in a restaurant, everything's under the table, okay? Uncle Sam, this freaking government, takes about half of what you make. So if you work at a restaurant and you know work for a night and you know busting tables, you know uh, washing pots and pans and stuff, they probably walk home with $100, $150 that night. You'd have to make about $250 at a regular job in order to bring home that kind of money. So restaurants probably some of the best, some of the best places to work at, and they're open a little bit later. Um, and then from the 18 to 22 year old, um, that that kind of area where you're in college, some of the best jobs are the commission-based jobs. I worked at Sprint PCS 
um, when I was in college, and it paid me phenomenal. Not only did I have an hourly rate, uh, an hourly wage, but also I got commission based on the amount of cell phones that I sold. I made a fortune. I made really good money when I worked in, in sales jobs. I didn't work at, you know, I worked at Best Buy, and that was kind of fun. That job sucked. But when I started working in cell phone sales, I started making a lot of money. So that 18 to 22 year old bracket looking to commission based jobs. Okay. As you start getting money in and stuff like that, what are some of the things that you can do to make your, your stretch your dollar as far as you possibly go? Okay, first things first is you gotta do a lot of research on your on your purchases. Now, I'm here for you. Email me if you have any questions, but you need to be purchasing guns that don't require a lot of money in upgrades, like smart parts. You bought whatever you smart parts for all intents and purposes, they're shipping you an empty box. You gotta rebuild everything, and that sucks, okay? There are so many other guns at the same price point as a smart parts gun that offer you ten times the amount of value, okay? You only have $200 to spend on a gun. You don't have $500 to spend on a gun. You only have $200 to spend on a gun. What should you get? Definitely watch getting the smart parts guns. I don't recommend them. They cost a fortune to get them competitive. Don't go with those. So many other guns. So do the research on the gun. You know, one of the best ways you can do research is actually going to the manufacturer's website and downloading the manual. You can actually take a look and see, okay, this gun's got a great ASA. This gun's got a great barrel. This gun's got a great feed neck. Here you go, dangerous power. This gun just came out. This is the G3. Look at this. Phenomenal feed neck. Lever lock feed neck. 400 bucks. Look at this ASA. Flip ASA. It's got a good regulator. It's got good eyes. Comes with a 14 inch barrel. I mean, what is this gun for? $400? It's $200 less than a shocker. And it comes with twice the upgrades. So definitely do the research on the gun so you're not wasting your money on upgrades. Upgrades are a huge killer. You're not playing paintball unless you're actually on the field. Entry and paint is what you should be thinking of. Entry and paint, not upgrades. So let's rally together as a Tech PB community. Let's post some post some good ideas underneath there for the people, the 12 to 14 year old, you know, the, uh, the the 15 to the 18 year old, and the 18 to the 22 year olds, so we can all get out there and play a little bit more paintball. Thanks for watching.